so hello everyone our today's topic is the local anesthesia so what are local anesthe anesthetics they are the drugs that when applied on the skin or injected into specific area they will temporarily block the feeling of pain in that area so they work by stopping the nerve signals without harming them so that means that they not only block the pain but also temporarily paralyze the muscle and affective functions so coming to the introduction in the ancient time in the earliest the earliest pain relief we use was the coca shrub it is native to the south america particularly the andes region so apart from that uh people chew coca leaves so chewing the coca leaves would provide a mild numb effect in the mouth so offering some local anesthesia for the dental pain similarly the cocaine it is a potent alkaloid that is derived from the coca leaves coming to the history of the lignocaine who first of all developed the anesthetic anesthetic lignocaine it was it was lofgren so lignocaine a lofgren developed the anesthetic lignocaine under the name xylocaine so let us discuss the first of all the indication for the use of lignocaine in the dentistry so first of all local anesthetic it is used when removing tooth whether it is simple extraction or a complex surgical extraction fillings for cavity fillings local anesthesia is open often applied to number the area around the tooth being treated in case with the root canal therapy involving the removal of the damaged pulp from inside the tooth while preparing crown and bridges while performing gingival graft or periodontal scaling and root planning yes uh, for the implants local anesthesia is used during the placement of dental implant specific other medical situations like tracheal intubation so local anesthesia it can be administered topically or through iv infusion to reduce the discomfort that is associated with the tracheal intubation so lignocaine used in the tracheal intubation is aimed as aimed at reducing the cardiovascular stress response to the procedure second as we know that lignocaine it is it is anti arrhythmic property so that helps that means that it can help to stabilize the irregular heart beats in situations like cardiac arrhythmia etc so the while local lignocaine it act as a local anesthetic it can also indirectly influence the cardiovascular parameter by reducing the body reaction to discomfort and stimulation associated with the procedure so other indications it they are, uh, it can be used in orthodontic procedures while adjusting adjusting braces or in a biopsy procedure to diagnose oral lesion or abnormality local anesthesia could be given to the biopsy site uh, treatment of the temporomandibular joint the injection local anesthesia may be used and uh, used as a injection into the jaw joint to relieve the pain and muscle tension associated with the tmj disorders so all these are use of the all these are the indication for the local anesthesia
Let us dis discuss the difference between the local anesthesia and the general anesthesia. First of all, the local anesthesia it is used to numb a uh, restricted that is a specific area of body like section a uh, small section of skin or a localized area where procedure will take place. Whereas the general anesthesia it includes a stage of unconsciousness and there will be complete lack of sensation throughout the entire or the whole body. The site of action of general anesthesia is the central nervous system whereas local anesthesia affect on the peripheral nerves. In general anesthesia the consciousness is lost whereas in local the consciousness is unaltered. Local anesthesia it is a minor procedure whereas GA it is a major procedure. So in a, in a non-cooperative patient the local anesthesia is not possible whereas GA can be given. So all these are the differences between the local anesthesia and the general anesthesia. Let us discuss the classification of the local anesthesia. So we can classify the local anesthesia based upon the uh, whether potency, low potency, intermediate potency or the high potency. Uh, low potency, short duration acting are the procaine and chlorprocaine. Remember for your entrance exam, the intermediate potency are the lignocaine and prelocaine whereas the high potency they are tetracaine, bupivacaine, propivacaine, etidicaine, mepivacaine, dibucaine. Based on the classification of this, uh, they can be classified either as a soluble or insoluble. Uh, soluble are cocaine, lidocaine, tetracaine and insoluble are benzocaine, butyl amino benzate etc. Based on the, uh, based on the chemical classification, they can be classified as either ester or amide. The example of esters, they are butacaine, cocaine, benzocaine, pipracaine, tetracaine. Esters are of benzoic acid or of para-aminobenzoic acid. The example of the para-aminobenzoic acid are chlorpropane, procaine, propoxicane. So remember the esters, they are metabolized in body through process known as hydrolysis. Whereas the amide the example of, let us discuss the example of amide group first. The amides are articane, bupivacaine, dibucane, lidocaine, tidocaine, mepivacaine, prilocaine. So remember these amides, they are metabolized in the liver. Remember the esters, they are more prone to the allergic reaction. The paraminobenzoic acid it is a great product of the esters that can trigger allergic response in some individuals. Whereas amide, they are less likely to cause allergic reaction. So they are generally safer to use. So the choice of which type of anesthesia to use depends on the factor like the specific procedure, the patient medical history or any allergy or sensitivity. Suppose a patient enters to dental clinic and it is allergic to ester type local anesthesia. Which type of local anesthesia would you use? We uh, here, if it is allergic to ester, then we will prefer the amide type local anesthesia. So when the patient has a known allergy or sensitivity to ester type local anesthesia, it is crucial to choose an alternative that is less likely to trigger an allergic response. 
So in such case, we will prefer a mild type local anesthesia. The example being the lidocaine, bupivacaine. So the amide, they are generally safer because these amides, they are metabolized in liver. And that is why they are less likely to produce allergic reaction than esters, which are metabolized through hydrolysis. There was a question in exam, if a patient is uh, allergic to both ester and amide, then which uh, drug you will be uh, using, in that you will can use diphenhydramine. Now, what are the natural natural local anesthesia? There are there are, they can be sexy toxin or tetrodoxin. So, tetrodoxin it is found in various various marine creatures. So, mechanism of action is this tetrodoxin will block the voltage gated sodium channels. So it will block these channels. So by as it inhibit the influx of sodium that are essential for the propagation of nerve signal, so that results in loss of sensation and muscle paralysis in the affected area. Other is the sexy toxin. It is a it is a product that is obtained from certain species of marine. Dinoflagellates. So it can accumulate in shellfish, making them toxic when consumed. So, like the tetradoxin, it has the similar mode of action. So, remember the point that all the LA they are the weak bases. So all LA they are weak bases. So what is the mode of action? First of all, you should uh, know the uh, normal nerve physiology. The neurons. The neurons they have a resting membrane potential that is around minus 70 millivolt. So that means that the inside, the inside of neuron, it is negatively charged compared to the outside. So this resting state, it is maintained by the permeability of cell membranes to ions and activity of the ion channels. Now, what is action potential? It is the action potential, it is the sequence of the events that consist of depolarization, repolarization and hyperpolarization. So the action potential, it consists of first is the depolarization, other is repolarization and third is the hyperpolarization. Let us discuss them one by one. Depolarization. Depolarization. It is a process by which the neuron membrane potential become less negative. That is strong to open the sodium channels. So when the sodium channels will open, the sodium would run into the neurons. So due to the influx, the sodium, they are positively charged. So the influx of the positive ions reduces the negative uh, that are that are present inside the cells. So making the membrane potential less negative. 
so if the depolarization reaching reaches a, cri a critical threshold typically around minus 55 millivolt it will trigger the initiation of the action potential so after depolarization the nerve the neuron will undergo repolarization so they will try to restore the negative charge inside the neuron so the new uh, the repolarization it is achieved through opening of the potassium channels so this repolarization is uh, achieved by the uh, there will be opening of the potassium channels so this will allow the potassium to leave the neuron that restores the negative charge so the repolarization will bring, uh, bring the membrane potential back to the resting state of around 70 millivolt so if the stimulus remember does not reach the threshold of around minus 55 depolarization here the, the, the process that depolarization would be insufficient to initiate a action potential so the in, uh, if it is less than minus 55 volt then the again the uh, the neuron will, would be in the resting state so if the depolarization does not reach the threshold and action potential is not generated preventing the transmission of the signal now let us discuss how the what is the mechanism of the ligno gain the first step we discussed was the depolarization so uh, in the normal nerve cell when stimulus that is stronger to initiate action potential the sodium channels would flow into the neurons that would that would uh, cause a, a depolarization now what would be the uh, suppose ligno gain is given so remember lignocaine is a sodium channel blocker so what is lignocaine it is a sodium channel blocker so what lignocaine will do it will enter the nerve cell and attach to this voltage gated sodium channel in its open or activated state so when the lignocaine will attach to the sodium channel it will hinder their ability to allow sodium to enter into the neuron so this means that during depolarization few sodium ions can flow through this blocked channel so result would be the rate and extent of depolarization, uh, depolarization would be decreased So the neuron struggles to reach the threshold necessary to generate an action potential as the sodium influx would be hindered. Now in repolarization, after the depolarization, the nerves undergo repolarization to restore the resting membrane potential. That again we discussed that here would be the opening of potassium channels allowing potassium to leave the neuron and restoring the negative charge. So what would be the effect of the lignocaine here? As we know that lignocaine is a sodium channel blocker. It primarily affects the sodium channels and does not have a direct impact on any potassium channels. So when the lignocaine does not directly interfere with the repolarization, its action during depolarization can indirectly influence the subsequent repolarization process. So if the depolarization that would be inhibited or slowed down due to the uh, due to the lignocaine blocking the sodium channel, the effect on the repolarization, the repolarization may also occur more slowly. So it will extend the time it takes for the neurons to ret return to its resting state.
सो द लिग्नो केन प्राइमरी मोड ऑफ एक्शन इज टू ब्लॉक सोडियम गेटेड चैनल आय स्लो डाउन और इनहिबिट द इन्फ्लेक्स ऑफ सोडियम आइन्स ड्यूरिंग द डीपोलराइजेशन सो दिस इंटरफेरेंस विद डीपोलराइजेशन indirectly affects the repolarization and makes it more difficult for the neurons to initiate and propagate the action potential so resulting in temporary loss of the sensation and pain relief in the area due to which the area where where lignocaine is applied now let us discuss the 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 role of ph and pka so what is ph ph is a measure of how the acidic or basic so it is a measure of as something acidic or basic a scale from 0 is termed as very acidic and to term 14 value is very basic whereas the seven is known as a neutral and pka it is the number that tell us how the molecule can change its shape and become charged or uncharged so if pka is very close to pH of the its environment it is more likely to change so it is more likely to change its shape now lignocaine as we know that it is a molecule that we use for the pain relief so it can change its shape either becoming charged or uncharged that is like a magnet or not lignocaine uh, lignocaine pka value is 7.7 so it means it can change its shape more easily in environment with ph when it is close to 7.7 so if ph is very close to 7.7 it can change its shape according to this statement now let us discuss how the lignocaine it would work in a normal physiology so when you get an injection of lignocaine in your body so where the ph is a slight acidic that is a ph of 7.4 so if at this if the ph is 7.4 this means that lignocaine is more likely to change it in the charge form so this charge form can block the pain signal by interfering with the nerve cells communication so the lignocaine effectiveness it will depend upon its ability to change shape and become charged and this will depend upon the, the depend upon the ph of the environment so in the uh, slightly acidic tissue where pain signals occur lignocaine is more likely to work well so example uh, uh, let us discuss why the lignocaine is not effective in in situation like pus you give a lignocaine lignocaine infiltration or block you find the patient still uh, uh, still feel a pain sensation why that occurs so in the acidic environment that is the ph will be a lower ph
so the lignocaine here will be having a harder time shifting into a charge blocking shape it acts like a, like a weak magnet so the lower ph in the pus affects its ability to easily change so that is why due to presence of pus the lignocaine may not be as effective as blocking the pain signal as it struggle to become the blocking magnet due to the acidic ph so in the pus the lignocaine has feel the difficulty shifting it into the charged form because of ph that does not match with the pka value so it is just like a magnet that is not sticking well to the material the sensory and the motile fibers they are equally sensitive to the local anesthesia the small nerve fibers they are more sensitive than the large nerve fibers so the uh, the sensitivity to the local anesthesia it is determined by the diameter of the nerve fibers as well as the fiber type remember the myelinated nerve fibers they are blocked before non myelinated fibers of the same diameter the smaller fibers remember they are more sensitive than the larger one the smaller sensory fibers they are more vulnerable to blockage because they generate high frequency long lasting action potential as compared to the motor fibers now among the somatic afferent the order of blockage is remember the uh, remember the order the pain temperature touch proprioception and skeleton muscle tone so while giving uh lignocaine you will notice that the pain is first blocked so pain it is often carried by the small diameter fibers and it is the first modality to be affected some people might feel touch sensation but not pain while using local anesthesia because because the pain will be the first modality to be affected then temperature then touch then proprioceptor and then skeleton muscle tone and the recovery is in the reverse order so the fibers that are more susceptible to local anesthesia they are usually the first to be blocked and the last to be recovered so last to recover here would be the pain sensation now the taste perception so when applied to the tongue the taste sensation are affected the bitter taste is lost first followed by sweet and sour taste so remember the bitter taste is lost first followed by sweet and sour taste while the salty taste could be affected last so as we know that the lignocaine they are weak base so their lipid solubility would allow them to penetrate the cell membrane so which is composed of lipids once it gets enter into the cell the local anesthesia can assess the intracellular component 
where it exerts its effect on the nerve fibers. The lipid soluble local anesthetic tend to have a more rapid onset of action and longer duration of action as they can easily penetrate the cell membrane and remain within the nerve fiber for an extended period. So more lipid soluble local anesthetic will have more potency. Along with that it is while the lipid soluble is advantages for the drug penetration it can also increase the potential for systemic toxicity if the drug spreads beyond the intended site of action. Now what are the ways through which local anesthesia would affect? So first of all it acts the mode of action is the local anesthesia it raises the threshold potential required for an action potential to occur. So that means a stronger stimulus is needed to trigger an action potential in the nerve cells exposed to the drugs. The first principle was it altered the resting membrane potential. So by, uh, they do it by blocking the sodium channels in the inactive state. So by preventing these channels from reopening, they inhibit the influx of sodium ion that are responsible for depolarization. The third is it, they decrease the rate of depolarization by inhibiting the influx of sodium ions into the nerve cells. And last is they prolong the rate of repolarization. That is the process of returning the nerve cells membrane to its resting state after an action potential. What are the theories of the local anesthesia? There are various theories of local anesthesia. Let us discuss them one by one. The first is the acetylcholine theory. So that is related to neuromuscular transmission. It involves the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction and, it, and its action on the muscle cells. Second is the calcium displacement theory. The LA will cause nerve block by displacement of calcium from some membrane that controls the entry of sodium. Other is the surface charge theory. It acts by bending to the nerve membrane and changing its electric potential. Other is known specific member membrane expansion theory. Other is the known specific membrane expansion theory. We know that LA they are lipid soluble. They can enter the nerve membrane and change the configuration of the membrane. So therefore by reduce space for the sodium to enter and that causes inhibition. The next is the specific receptor theory. It is the most accepted theory. It is also known as lock and key model. So it was first of all given by Fisher. So according to this theory, the drug interact with the specific receptor as a key will fit into a lock. So the each drug it has a unique chemical structure that allows it to bind selectively to its target receptor. Next coming to pharmacokinetics of the local anesthetics. So when Local anesthesia, it is injected into the soft tissue, they can have pharmacological effects on the blood vessels. So they can produce vasodilation. Remember many local anesthetics like lignocaine produces vasodilation. 
when injected into the soft tissues. Vasodilation means the blood vessels in area in that area expand leading to increase in the blood flow. So that can enhance the distribution of local anesthetic throughout the tissue and prolong its duration of action. In contrast, remember cocaine is the only local anesthetic that, that can cause vasoconstriction. So vasoconstriction means narrowing of the blood vessels that will reduce the blood flow to the area uh, that can minimize bleeding and prolong the local anesthetic action. The cocaine, it has a significant potential for abuse and it is not used for medical purposes. Now what are the ways through which through which local anesthesia can be given, oral route, topical route or by injection. The oral route it is less common and it is used for mucosal or dental procedures. Example is topical sprays, gels can be used. So topical oral gels or sprays containing lignocaine can be used. A second route is topical. Topical local anesthesia, it is applied directly to the skin or mucous membrane. Example is EMLA cream that contains lignocaine and prelocaine. that is used to numb the skin before the procedure like minor surgical incisions etc. The third is the injection. It can be injected directly into or near the area where the procedure has to be performed like lignocaine for the dental work to numb the mouth, bupivacaine for epidural anesthesia during childbirth etc. Coming to the toxicity, the systemic toxicity of the lignocaine upon rapid intravenous injection is related to its anesthetic potency. The CNS effect includes uh, the CNS in effects include lightheadedness, dizziness, mental confusion, convulsions. The the CVS. Toxicity may manifest as bradycardia, hypotension, arrhythmia. The local tissue toxicity of LA is generally low, but how? But the wound healing may be delayed. Hypersensitivity reactions include there may be rashes, angioedema, asthma can occur with the lignocaine. So these reactions generally are more common with the Easter linked lignocaine. Easterling local anesthesia, but rare with the rare with the lignocaine 